Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Dean Callan Show. Um, and today it is a legit morning uh, situation going on. Let me just um, <laughs> properly explain this to Rogerio yet. <laughs> I just got him on the field. Good morning. Um, it, it's very Good morning, early everybody, to me, well- but I figured uh, I like going live at 6 p.m. Yeah, and uh, if I'm going to go live in Japan rather than 2 in the morning for Rogerio, I thought I'd make it 9 in the morning for me. So let me bring Rogerio in, not make, not make him hang on any longer. Um, so let me see. Nope, nope, that didn't work. <laughs> what about this one? Hello, good morning. I, I cut to my Guinness cam instead of to your camera by accident. Let me bring Roger, Roger can you hear me? Um, okay. Yeah, Just a second. No, no. The That's sound is coming slowly. But a lot of slurry on the sound. Hello, good morning. I, I can't Let me see what goodness. I can do. Uh, can you hear me? Roger, can you hear me? Yeah, right now I can listen clear. Okay, okay. here we go. Good morning, everyone. The sound is coming. Not 100% sure where, but uh, it is definitely repeating somewhere. Yes, yes. Yeah, right now I can listen clear. Okay, here we go. Good morning. Is it Facebook? Damn it. I've never had this before. Is it? I think it's popped up somewhere on my uh, computer. Yes, yes. It's actually playing the live stream. I'm just going to get out of the room. No, are you getting that? Or is it too early in the morning for me? For the life of me, establish where that noise is coming from. Damn it! It's too early in the morning. What is that? Come on, Gino. Come on, buddy. All right, it's definitely a feedback from yours, now that I can identify that. Um, Rogerio, I'm getting a weird sound from you. Come on, buddy. If you can hear me, can you hear me? All right, it's definitely a feedback from yours, now that I can identify that. Damn, this is so unfair. Um, what about now? I can hear you, yeah. Jim? All right, it sounds okay. I'm not getting that noise. Perfect. Okay, so all the birds went away. Yep, there was a little screeching. Could you hear the screeching? Yeah, yeah, it was strange. Yeah, really strange. All right, it's all gone now. Everything seems to be working, thank God. And I didn't okay. touch anything. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how I fixed that. I, I don't know. Maybe someone else fixed it for me. It's probably, uh, it's probably Diogo. Pro- Diogo's probably hacked my system and fixed it for me. Um, okay. How are you, Rogerio? Long time no see. Yeah, like, uh, haven't been in London for a couple of years already. It's really nice to see you. Uh, things here in Tokyo is kind of, uh, we just reopened the bar two okay. days ago. Uh, sorry, how but, many days uh, ago? Uh, two days ago. Okay, okay. And, and, and how have uh, you closed? Oh, we have been closed for over two months this year. 
And uh, last year too, we we were open like for short hours. So we okay. it was a strange year, not only for us in Asia, but for everyone. I think even for you in London. Yeah, was, the, uh, the 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 way but, this uh, the way the UK has worked, um, they're going into lockdowns. But the first lockdown was maybe a year ago, um, and it lasted a few months. But just everything closed. You know, like the bars are just not allowed to open. And uh, a few people adjusted quickly to start selling, um, you know, to-go cocktails. Um, yes. But you needed, uh, you, you needed to, to figure out what the legislation was. And it wasn't clear at the time whether you were allowed to do it. Okay. And some people just dive straight in. And others, as you can imagine, not wanting to lose their license, were very reluctant. And then it reopened over summer. And then there was another lockdown for another couple of months and then it reopened again and now we're in our third lockdown and it's been since November last year all pubs and bars have been completely closed restaurants everything wow must be really tough man yeah it's been uh, it's it's been difficult like i i'm not i don't own a bar as you know like i've got this um so it's been difficult for yeah. me because my my work stopped um, but watching my friends who have to pay their employees suffer has been even worse, I think. Well, well I think they're in a much tight, worse position than me, so I, I have to be grateful, you know? Yes. That makes sense. And, and you guys, uh, yes, how have, you, have you been doing anything new to get past the, the restrictions? Okay, so our option was... Uh, Okay, here in Tokyo, a lot of bars as well, they try to do the ready-to-go or ready-to-drink yep. bottle cocktails. Uh, there is a little legalization issue as well, I, uh, some people said to do, but we don't have a, a strong uh, clientele that are looking for ready-to-drink uh, drinks. Yeah. So our option, as we have a three bars, our option was to open for a coffee time. That's our bar called Bar Tram, and serve uh, coffee and absinthe. People start to drink more absinthe in the afternoon. We start to advertise more to have a late afternoon chill absinthe. Uh, no. Not so much in cocktails. Mainly simple things. Uh, and, uh, and the other two bars were closed. Bar Trench and Bar Trorado were closed. Okay. And we decided instead of uh, trying to sell something, we just we focus more on uh, education. We we start to do some training with the staff and uh, just review what we have been done wrong. And you start to organize things, and uh, because before everything was spread around all the receipts, all the ways how to work, we decided ah. to put in one place. So, so, and, so uh, across the bars, you had different ways of working in different places, but you took this time to yeah. consolidate and make it all one one company. Yeah. Is, that, is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We decided to make uh, something more solid and standard, standardize a little bit more. Okay. And put uh, all receipts in one place and easy to to look at. I think was was a good moment of reflection and see what we're doing and just to, to get a little bit more organized and more effective. Super cool. Yeah, that's a, it's, a, it's interesting because... For me, um, I'm look. I'm trying to look into the future to see what's 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 going to happen. You know, when everything comes back. And um, I was watching a live stream yesterday by by Julian De Ferrell, who uh, is one of the UK's okay. kind of. You know Julian, right? He's a he's a legend. He's really good. Yeah. And he was saying that um, you know he has a five year old daughter, and um, I as much as she's missing out on going to school and she's missing out on some of the lessons, like, you know, it's not the same with him giving some tutoring. Um, she, he has a five-year-old daughter that already knows how to operate Microsoft Teams and, and run a conference <laughs> meeting. You know what I mean? 
Um, uh, we, we didn't. I didn't even have a, a mobile phone at that age. Well, there were no mobile phones <laughs> available at that age. Um, never mind uh, Microsoft Teams, which I still struggle with. With all my technology, um, I we're probably. Really if you need a management uh, training, you just consult a five years old yeah. uh, kid that they know already about <laughs> <laughs> people. You'll be asking six-year-olds, how, how do I get this PowerPoint to play through Microsoft Teams? And they'll be like, boop, boop, boop. But I guess yeah. kids learn really fast, right? They're like a sponge. Or maybe they are more present on the moment. And then sometimes when you start to get old, we, we pay a, too much attention on the future. And then you, <laughs> you end up forgetting the present and uh, makes things more complicated, probably. Yeah? <laughs> that is the most this is why i love you so much rogerio because you're so insightful and you see things through such a beautiful lens i love it i love that you yeah. that that's even better I, i've just you you have a you have a daughter right yes 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 the problem is i'm studying with her right now okay okay <laughs> well my son's not he's 19 months he's turns 20 he's just turned 20 months i think yeah, okay, he's not quite big two. boy already. Yeah, yeah he turns yeah. two in July. But um, as he's getting more conscious of, you know, dada, mama, and, and he wants us to play with him and do activities, I'm having to find myself, someone who, who has so easily distracted, I find myself learning to block out what I need to do next, you know, what I've, what, what's currently going on, any little dangers, and you know, social mm. media and things that are messing up my head and focus on being in the moment. Um, and it's the most rewarding thing uh, because I wasn't doing that before. I was never in the moment anywhere. <laughs> I was always in two minds. Also, sometimes it's not easy because you get used to always doing something or you get better in something, but you forgot what's going on in front of your eyes. So, so do you think um, when coming out of, the, obviously the pandemic is going to end at some time, right? Yes. Do you think coming out of it, um, you'll be in a better place or do you, you know, whether it's well, as far as bartending is concerned? Uh, our clientele used to be 50% locals and 50% people that were come from all over the world. So we completely this past year, we, we, we don't have that clientele anymore because people stop to travel. Yeah. But the good point is we start to have more uh, younger clientele and people that uh, didn't come to our bar before. And there are people that are not used to come to bars. So we, ha we had to change a little bit the way we, we make our menu or the way we, we serve the clientele. We start to slow, to step back a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, serve, serve more simple things. Yeah. So I believe that uh, as a consequence, we... For a while, we're going to keep doing that, not serving like crazy ingredients where people don't understand. Yeah. Um, we are slapping, is, is stepping back a little bit. Uh, for the super cocktail aficionados, maybe our cocktails are get simpler, but we are getting a new clientele that maybe for the future is going to be our... Yeah, yeah. It's it's good to have a focus on like the next generation of local drinkers because, you know, your bar. I I wish I had a video I could press and play so people could understand just how beautiful the bars are. Um, there's it's like trench in Thank particular. You. It's such a small bar and it's such a unique uh, atmosphere that I think. Um, it would it, being so small. It would attract if you if I were walking past, I would stop in because I I would assume it's my style of bar, like cocktails. Like the time I was there, you had a little jazz band playing above the bar. Oh yeah, 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 yeah it's true. Do that? 
Oh, uh, you're using that for two meter distance space. <laughs> We we stopped to do mainly because of the complaining of the neighbors, but uh, someday we would like to to return to do those little tiny tiny lives. Yeah, just as you explained for people that doesn't know trench trench is only like a thirteen feet bar, so the really tiny bar. Once when Dean came to our bar. Probably he struggled a little bit uh, during the guest shift because uh, Dean <laughs> was quite uh, not a big belly, but for the Japanese it's a little tiny, tiny counter. <laughs> it, it was, was a fun, nice. was a fun guest shift. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's an amazing space, like, and and such a the the one moment that will never leave my mind was. Um, did, do you remember I told you about uh, when I lived in Shanghai in 2007, 2008 um, and started 2009, I think it was. Um, I Actually, met a guy I who was telling that. me a legendary story of an amazing bar up in the, in the mountains in uh, Japan where, where the snow would fall and the entrance to the bar would be a fridge door. And it was called the yes, fridge. Yes. I was the telling... Bar so for everybody else out there, I'm doing a guest shift and I'm telling my dream is to go to this bar I heard of. I don't know if it's real, but there's this legendary bar that I heard of. And the, 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 the waiter, the waitress that was serving alongside me the whole night was like, oh, yeah, I work there. <laughs> and, so, I, and I just I could not believe for she was married to the owner, right? Yes, yes, she's still running the place. Still she's from Canada. Place. I just couldn't, I, I, like, I could not believe that of all the things that that was something that 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 I thought was like the coolest thing about Japan. You know, just the that the attention to small details and ideas that just, wow, where did you have an idea to have a fridge door? You know, that's so cool that I, 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 it was almost mythical. Like it, maybe it can't even be true. The guy must have been, you know, taking mushrooms before he went snowboarding or whatever. And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> your bar was the place that connected like my dreams with y your, your reality. It was insane. It, I'll never forget yeah. that moment. It was so cool. But yeah, you need to, if you have a chance to go there, you need to go soon, since uh, the back bar is a window. Yeah. And uh, someone bought the land behind the, the building, so they're going to lose that beautiful view uh, in a couple of years. Uh, oh, no. Okay. But, uh, I'll put a, I'll put a rush go, on it. I'll you need to go. Yeah, um, since we open the, the doors for traveling, you should be, but on the winter time only. Yeah, yeah, I figured, I figured. So hopefully that, yeah, who, they won't build in the winter, will they? So unless they build uh, this summer, you know what I mean? Yeah, they usually, they, usually they open only on the winter time. No, I mean for, the people building years. behind in the space. They won't build in the winter. Uh, yeah. So unless uh, they build can. this summer, you know, yes. if they start building now, we're in trouble. But uh, no, no, I've got one more chance. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, I know it's super early in the morning here, but it's not super early in the morning there. Um, and I, I didn't, we didn't have time to kind of, you know, share the ideas that you might have. Um, the drink I just had, I, I usually start with a Guinness, but today I've started with a pink soda, which like, pink check soda. this out. Honestly, Electra bought it, right? It's a Schweppes pink soda, and it's like, okay. an, yeah, an aromatic, um, it's an aromatic citrus soda. I, I knew nothing about it until just you know, last night, but it's actually delicious. <laughs> I had a yeah. Tanqueray Rangpur gin with this last night. It was, it was really, really good. Um, but it, have you got a cocktail that is one of the popular cocktails on your list that I might have the ingredients for here that you could teach me this morning, walk me through um, and vicariously teach everybody who might be watching this either now live or later on? 
Okay, let me check. Uh, do you have uh, any Falenum of you? Any? Falenum? The, the, uh, the, I don't even know what that is. Our Mount Liquor. Oh. Tropical. Like Orgiat? No, the Falenum. Mm. No, I don't have it. Oh, Falunum. No, I don't have Falunum. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Let me Maybe. see what what else. Uh, so I don't have Falunum, unfortunately. I've I, I guess the closest thing I would have would be Italicus, but I mean that's not really the same thing. Okay. Give me a second. Let's keep the chat, okay. and I'm gonna bring a, a receipt for you right now. All right. Um, and, uh, yeah. Sorry to put you on the spot like that. But um. So yeah. in in other things, uh, what uh what are there, have, have there been other areas of Japan outside of Tokyo that have different rules or has has Japan had like one blanket rule across the board for for what's happening with COVID? I, I ask because I don't hear anything coming out of Japan. It's hard. It's hard when there's very little on social media and um, nobody's reporting the news of what's happening around the world in bars, you know? Mm. And that, it makes you worried. Like, imagine we come out of lockdown, everything starts to go back to normal, and then you find out that the entire bar scene in, 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 in one of the world's foremost uh, bars and cocktail cities was just wiped out, you know? And suddenly there's all these apartments. Um, does that make sense? So that's why I'm asking. Is there yes. any big, big news coming out of Tokyo or uh, the rest of well, Japan that's for... different? For the COVID, I think what was where was most affected for the bars was Tokyo and the states around Tokyo, like Yokohama, Chiba, and all the, the states surrounding Tokyo. Because uh, once you have the lockdown, and then right now, little by little, we are open until eight o'clock at night. That okay. for I think where was most hit was the bars because people start to drink up here in japan mainly not early hours but after nine o'clock at night uh, but the good point is you don't see bars closing down but what you see more are restaurants closing down you see, right here in front of close to our bar we see we there is a restaurant that was run for 40 years and they had to close down. Wow. We had a little lovely place that was over here for 20 years. They had to close down too. Is that, is that because think, the bars in, in Tokyo, they, they, they hold on to such small square footage, whereas restaurants, you need more space? I believe so. I believe so. And, and um, for restaurants, you have the, uh, the waste issue as well and uh the volume of people that come for lunch for example is quite small compared with the bar and sometimes if you go to the bar you have two three or four drinks if you go to a lunch place you're gonna have one meal yeah and then that's uh for for the uh, for the restaurants i think was a tough uh period of yeah, time for the, them the restaurants here i noticed people dealing with food here um because people were going out and you had to pre-book you know you had to confirm that you were going somewhere and and go to that spot you couldn't just walk in off the street so people to give their keep their options open in the uk would book three or four places you know, and yes. then when they decide to go to one of them, they're not sure which ones they're going to go to. They decide to go to one. They've canceled three other places at the last minute. So cancellations were a really big problem in, in food led uh, bars and restaurants here. It was huge. Oh, that must be really tough if you, if you cancel on the, on the last minute. Yeah, yeah. A lot of cancellations. So people started, you see on social media forums, the that the people, more and more people complaining about the same thing and then other people coming in and saying, take a deposit. You know, if you mm. look at a Michelin star restaurant, because they have, have that mise en plus that's so expensive and so fancy, you know, you've got to put your money down before you, when you make a oh, booking. Yes. 
Yes. Um, otherwise, if you cancel, it hits them in the pocket. Um, the yeah. two tighter margins. So maybe coming out after uh, COVID, there'll be people will have a different perspective on, you know, bookings and seats and conf confirmations and deposits and things. Um, mm. But I had a, I had a question that I was super interested. When I was last in Tokyo, right? You know, the one of the uh, I guess tourist novelties is buying um, alcoholic beverages from vending machines, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which you don't have everywhere else. Like, you can't just go to a vending machine and buy, buy, buy a whiskey soda here. You can't buy a highball out of a vending machine. Um, oh, yes. It's a yeah, thing so, that we see very often here that we don't pay attention. That's true. Yeah, so, you can so, get so a I, thought, I thought, like, maybe the, the, the conversation around to drinking at home, picking up a cocktail and bringing it to your house. You have to go to a bar to get takeaway drinks, mm. you either a supermarket and you make it at home or you go to a bar and you get your takeaway drinks or delivery drinks. But you guys have vending machines. So, you know, I, I, I thought to myself, if I was able to, to, to put, you know, I, I would have bar trench vending machines. Um, oh, that would I'd be nice. Huh? 24 hours. What's that? 24 hours. Yeah, exactly. Are you able to do that kind of thing? Or is that just me having crazy ideas? No, Dean, you have so many amazing ideas. I think <laughs> we will make a, a, a vending machine serving a, our most famous cocktail called Labsan Sonic. Yeah, oh, that is absent with soda and tonic. tonic. Yeah, nice. Yes, would be amazing. I think yeah, I should yeah. write down. This. You hadn't thought of that. <laughs> you should yeah. do it. It'd be so cool. Like, because if you if you have a bar, like, you know, if you had a, one vending machine that had a couple of bars, you know, you had your f different bars, cocktails in it, you could go and and buy from your favorite bars without, you know. Yeah. Rip. Anyway, I don't know. There's probably rules. <laughs> so, what cocktail would you recommend? Even it doesn't matter. Even okay. if it's a classic, you know, something that that you um, like, yeah. and then you tell me the specifications. Um, I've just saw your long glass in front of you, Italicus. Uh, oh, yeah. Dry sherry. Lots. I've got lots. I'll, I'll, look, I'll cut to a. Oh no, I won't. I was going to cut to a wider view of the bar, but I've got. I've got most things, yeah, apart from Falernum, okay. obviously. I uh, now I've got comments from Anya and Joe saying they're going to bring me Falernum, so that's, that's going to get fixed. <laughs> Let me write down for you. Do you have Pisco? I do. Yeah. Oh God, where is all the Pisco? Pisco. I need to rearrange this bar. I'm writing down the receipt for you. <laughs> oh my God. It's so funny because there's so much, there's so many bottles in here that I'm actually like, I keep moving like a, a section of bottles into further and further away from the back of the bar to free up space. But when I do that, I actually just straight up lose them. They're just gone. Come on, Pisco, where are you? There we go. I found one of them. All right. So you've, you've typed it for me? Yeah. On the... <laughs> on the... Um, the chat corner. The chat. Is this on the Facebook chat? Yeah. No, no, in the YouTube, YouTube chat. chat. All right. Let's try to find the YouTube chat. Um, the reason I'm not seeing the YouTube chat was because I closed everything down, panicking when the when the audio was funny before. 
All right, here we go. Okay, 20 Pisco, 20 dry sherry, Italicus, 10. If you have lemon juice. So Pisco, 20, dry sherry, 20. Italicus, Italicus 10, 10, lemon juice, 10, soda. Okay. Sparkling soda, if you have lemon, lemon juice. And is it shaken and strained? Uh, if, yeah, let's shake it up. And make, make like make a highball sun. You just made it up then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. And then uh, just try out the sweetness. If you need a little bit more sweetener, you can you, you add a sweetener on that. All right. So you're making this up as that. you go, right? Yes. This is my style. So this is a brand new drink for the Dean Callen Show. Yeah. Oh, yes. There's those two. And you said around, you th you're thinking 10 mils lemon juice. Yeah, but I was thinking 10. We may need to add a little bit more later. It depends how sweet it's going to be. Okay. It's just like we are serving a similar drink here in, uh, in our menu right now. Would be a, a Collins cocktail, but using a sherry, uh, sherry and pisco. Yeah, nice. And, uh, we use some basil. It's almost like a, it's basil mesh with uh, Jean Collins, but more using a sherry, dry sherry as a as a base. Really light one, and some dashes of bitters on the top. We can do some bitters as well. Okay, so yeah. let's uh, this add is, This is our stuff. suggested lineup. We got we're gonna put twenty of uh, pisco, twenty of Tio Pepe, ten of Italicus, ten of lemon. We're gonna taste yeah. and then we're gonna put it into a long glass, right? Yes. All right. And then with sparkling water, top up with sparkling water. I got that. All right. So I'm going to start with my 10 lemon. And what is the most, most popular cocktails in the bars at the moment? You, you, you were mentioning some of the ones that you're selling. What, what, are, what are people drinking in Tokyo these days? Could, uh, I don't know in general what people are drinking in other bars, but uh, we just opened three days ago. Mm -hmm. oh, our, top, our top seller right now is uh, Belize. Uh, no, a uh, Mai Tai. Ah, nice. We, we just put a Mai Tai using a, a rum from Belize. Fair. But a uh, single cast, so high proof, high proof rum, 53%. That's a super, super tasty, yeah? Not this one. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's a dark rum. All right. So I'm going to give this a taste and we're going to give it a quick shake and then, and then like a Collins with soda. It's nice. I more think sweet. when it could probably use a little hint more sweetness because I think yeah. it'll lose some of the flavor when it goes into the soda, if that makes sense. Uh, agave? Do you have agave? Agave? I usually do. I really need to organize my bar better. Especially if I'm going to be saying to people, yeah, I've got most stuff. Just like, tell me what you want me to make. All the syrups are in here. I've got some honey if that works. No, yeah, honey works. Yes. It's not the most flavorful. We are in the spring. <laughs> By the way, cherry blossom right now is really beautiful. Yeah, it's it's beautiful here. Look, I've been collecting them. Well, okay. Was, uh, <laughs> there's a cherry blossom in my garden. Well, there's two. There's a white cherry mm -hmm. blossom and a pink cherry blossom trees that fuse together, and uh, comes out half white, half pink. Hmm. But I was just a I, second. The uh, road that that leads to my son's uh, nursery. 
mm. is completely full of cherry blossom. And um, I don't know how, but in the afternoon, a couple of days ago, I'm cycling to pick him up. And the smell of cherry blossom was blowing in my face and I could really smell it. So I stopped and I picked up some cherry blossom. And then nothing. Do they only give smell for like a day or I don't understand that. No, no, usually it's longer. Dean, I think I'm going to ask for a drink for me as well. I'm triad right now. I'm going to ask the, the bartender to make a drink for okay. me. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is uh, our bartender called uh, Moesan. He's going to make a cocktail for me. Morning. Can you, can you make, uh, good morning, can you make uh, an agricultural sweet for me? This is the fair one. Okay. Okay. Good, good. He's gonna come in two minutes and bring a cocktail for me. What's that? He's gonna make a cocktail for me as well. Okay, amazing. Now, you, you mentioned bitters with this. Should I put a bit of bitters? Oh no, a dash of absinthe on top. Okay, even better. So it's kind of like... It's kind of like a Corpse Reviver number two meets a London Calling. You know the London Almost, Calling? Almost, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm so, it's too early in the morning for me today. It's just so <laughs> much too early in the morning for me. What have I even done here? I've just knocked the top of the shaker down the back mm. of the bar. <laughs> All right. New shaker. I think I bought this with you on Kapabashi Street. Yeah, you know, it's a good quality shaker, the traditional. That was a good trip, huh? All right, shall I shake this and strain it out? Yeah. That's it, huh? <laughs> All right. We need to find a name for this cocktail, huh? London Calling and uh, Cops Revolver blend together, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, what would we call it? Uh, well, I, I'm a big fan of mashups um, as far as cocktails mm -hmm. are concerned. I've got yes. one that I'm working on right now, which I think will be the coolest drink ever for the summer. Um, yes. You know the, you know the, you obviously know pina colada, right? Yes. So we're gonna do a sherry colada. Yeah. Well, I already. So you know the sh fino colada, like the sherry pina colada, right? Yes. Yes. I saw the video. Okay. So fino colada, right? You got the fino colada, and that's instead of a pina colada, right? So you know, um, you know the Miami Vice, the way you take a pina colada and a strawberry daiquiri and you mix them together yes. and it makes one drink, right? So instead of a pina colada and a strawberry daiquiri, a fino colada and a strawberry frosé, which is like you take rosé wine as a base and you add some strawberry flavor and stuff and you blend it to make a frosé, like a rosé frosé, put together. It's like a low ABV wine based uh, Miami Vice. Don't know oh, a name for it yet, nice, though. Huh? And I need to perfect the strawberry puree. I've got like a, a, I played around with a little bit, but a bitter strawberry, almost like bitter orange and strawberry in the same thing. Like if you put a little bit of Campari in strawberry puree to give it a little bit more depth. Bitterness, yes, depth. All right, what are we garnishing this with? A little dash of absinthe? A little dash of absinthe. Now, your your bar still focuses quite heavily on absinthe, yeah? Oh, yes. We have been, you know, focused on that for, for a long time already. Over 10 years. Uh, yeah, all the three bars we, we serve absinthe. 
the it's traditional it's way as well, and we always have a little dash of absinthe here or there. Make it fancy. All right, I'm going to taste it. Uh, is yours ready yet? And a little lemon peel on the top. Yeah, I can put another. Mine, I think it's like about to come. Let me see if I can check it out where, where the cocktail is coming. So okay, he's bringing the cocktail here. Oh, I see. Here so we go. Good. Perfect timing. Wait, I might, <laughs> yeah. I might, I might yes, match you yours with a little hint of mint as well. Yeah. Amazing. He just made a um, uh, agricole chartreuse, a rum chartreuse, a uh, rum uh, swizzum using a uh, yellow chartreuse and a uh, uh, a white proof fair muscovado. Maybe we're ready to to cheers. All right, <laughs> the guys are commenting, Rogero, you're putting Dean in the weeds. But you know what? Actually, I really enjoy. Um, getting lost in the mess that is my bar because I when I get it fixed it'll make things so much nicer when I've got it all organized I'll be really proud of myself cheers okay cheers mm. Mm. Really, That's good. really good Tasty. yeah we need to That's find delicious. a name for this next oh so do you know um do you, have, do you have any idea when uh, travel will unlock to Japan and people can start coming to visit again? Wow, well, this is a, is a strange year. I'm not sure. I even, we are not even counting with that because if you wait too much, and uh, it's something that we need you to just let it go. And uh, if it opens the doors, we would be happy, but I think it's going to take a while. Uh, expectations, we, we, we cannot expect anything because um, things are yeah. crazy in this couple of years. It's something that uh, we just need to let it go and uh, do our job here. And, uh, yeah. You know, like um, some, some places, are, the, the COVID is still quite strong. And then, uh, yeah, we just need to just be wait. and we'll wait. Well, um, I, I think, I think uh, I'll, I'll let you go because I know you're a busy man. Um, but uh, thank you so much for jumping on a call with me, Rogerio. I'm glad to know that your bars are still, are still alive and well. And uh, I wish yeah. you all the best in, in, in the near future when you unlock. Um, I wish you yeah. all the best when, when the tourists start coming in and I hope to see you as soon as possible. I want to get back over to Japan and say hello. Oh, thank you, Dean. It was a pleasure to see you as well. Uh, it was a nice to, to have a chat with you. I know that a lot of things are changing and the way we are running bars, I think, are changing not only here in, in Japan, but in Europe as well. Yeah. Uh, you do. We're changing a lot of things. How we work, how we we present our menu, how we welcome the guests as well. I think uh, even when the doors open to welcome the guests, I think it's going to be a completely different way with how we we welcome the guests. I think we're going to be continue to use the mask. I, I believe, or mm. or to using make alcohol feel to. Safe. Like, Oh yeah, yeah, to, uh, to to make people feel safe, and then I think the way people drinking uh, here in Japan, I think is is start to change a little bit. People are start to drink early hours. Is something probably in London is something normal to go in a pub early hours, but in Japan, you it's not usually it's not usual to go to a, a bar three o'clock or four o'clock in the afternoon. But, uh, but, but little by bars little. are open later in Japan, you know, like, I mean, we oh, have yes. all night sessions. Yeah, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, 4, or even yeah. 7 o'clock in the morning, we can find a place to have a drink. I think things are changing little by little. And, uh, and how we, we consume alcohol is, is changing yeah. a little bit. And people are, well, 
low ABV, I think, is growing something that uh, for Japan, as you have come before, low ABV is something that was known existence, but little by little, we have a, a little approach on that. Tiny yeah, that's interesting, tiny. actually, because it's become quite big here. But it's, okay. it's, 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 there's this weird, I don't know, you know, as, so I would consider myself a classically trained bartender, right? So yeah. if someone says to me, brandy, I don't immediately think of cognac. I think of all the brandies that are available, you know, whether it's South African brandy, um, American brandies, mm. apple brandies. And, and if, if the legislation changed to say that like all, you know, you can only call cognac brandy, then that would make sense to, well, it wouldn't make sense, but my mind would then hear cognac as soon as you say brandy, right? Yes. But when when someone says spirit, you know, I think of the, the separation of alcohol from, from heavier waters and that spirit or geist coming out and being condensed and captured in, in, in its liquid form again. Um, and whether, you know, if, if you were to say um, tea, you know, if you boil steam and it comes out, you wouldn't call it a spirit, you know, because it hasn't got the alcohol in it. So I think um, one of the things that, and I think, see other people struggle with it, it one of the things that um, confuses people a little bit is the labeling where it's like non-alcoholic spirit, or if you said non-alcoholic gin or non-alcoholic rum, because it, there is no non-alcoholic rum. You know, you you can't call it rum if it's got no alcohol. It's not gin if it's got no alcohol. It's 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 water, even if gin was yeah. in it before. Um, so one of the things for me is that I think um, it's booming, but I wonder um, for how long before people? How long will it be non-alcoholic gin? You can go out and have the same flavor in your gin and tonics, but then no hangover before it starts to become like, okay, non-alcoholic drinks are okay in, in bars, like where it's, it's never been a taboo. Um, do you find in, in Japan that people are, are asking for non-alcoholic gin or are they going low ABV to be a bit more respectful of their bodies? I think it's still uh, uh, something so small that I don't know where or which way it's going to go, but I think it's not in that, in, it's not reaching a uh, certain way to have uh, no alcohol drink of uh, complex flavor, it's still something quite yeah. simple. Uh, I see that in the market you have the no alcohol gin or some distillate of herbs and botanicals. Yeah. It's still but not they, one brand, a Japanese uh, bartender that produce one, one product that is a non-alcohol gene, but it's not something that you see everywhere. Okay. Do you, do you uh, have, I'm not... Um, are you starting to get non-alcoholic bitter aperitifs coming into Japan? Like, you know, like a non-alcoholic version of Aperol or like a non-alcoholic... Um, oh, like, how do I describe well, it? Like, so these guys, these are some of... I think you would love these. These are some of my favorite non-alcoholic bitter aperitifs well I haven't seen oh man okay i personally will try to get you some but look at these like everleaf so so everleaf right so see see that the you you'd like these i think um because they 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 the, the spirit of the ingredients is uh captured in the liquid and like one of my favorite parts this one here for example um, it has flavors of uh, Japanese wild strawberries and like cherry blossom Maybe. and pine and stuff like that. And um, the owner, uh, he created this to, to give you the journey of flavor that you would expect to have if you were walking up a mountain into where they have, you know, wild strawberries at the top. And it tastes amazing. It's um, it's difficult to. They taste so good. They're difficult to hold on to, and you get that. Um, for me, bars aren't about getting drunk. It's about escapism, and mm. I like big flavors like Negronis and Boulevardiers, 
Um, so if I were to, to have a Boulevardier and then have something in between, to keep up that bitterness in my palate and keep up that astringency, then it's great to go have a non-alcoholic chaser because normally I would just have mm. soda water. Um, and these guys are great for that. Um, but they've just come out. I don't know if he's in Japan yet, but it might be Blue one of those things. So I'll try, to, I'll try to either get you a small sample sent to you um, or, yes. or get you a bottle of these to taste because they're, they're not too expensive, you know? Mm. They're a reasonable price. And then if you've seen this before, have you seen this guy? It's Australian. It's called, it's called Liars. Liars. Yeah, it, so this, okay. I know I, I, I said, <laughs> I said you, I'd let you go, but I, I figured I'd share this with you because that's the idea of this whole video. Um, to, 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 to share what's happening over here with what's happening over there, right? Um, but these have now hit supermarket shelves. And I'll tell you something, um, it tastes like Aperol, but to the point that like, um, if you, if you to, were to, to create an Aperol spritz with this, you can't tell that it's not Aperol. You know, like it tastes wow. so close. <laughs> And it I, and in some cases I would even say better, and I made I had uh, obviously we're old enough now that a lot of um, our friends are pregnant, and um, when I have uh, pregnant ladies come here and they're sitting down, I still want to make them cocktails with the same theater and same function and form that I would if I'm making everybody else a cocktail. So I'm making aperol spritzes, and then I make a. A, a non-spritz, and I put um, no secco instead of prosecco, which is non-alcoholic prosecco. And this, honestly, it kind of tasted a bit better. It was like, wow, <laughs> this tastes really good. So yeah, we, there's, yeah, it's becoming more popular the non-alcoholic thing here. But as a bartender that just wants to give an experience to the guest, to have the freedom to be able to, to you don't have to. It used to be, I would take like. I'd make a non-alcoholic mojito, you know, and it's just like lime lemonade with some, some mint. But this makes it a little more interesting for people who they're choosing not to drink alcohol or they can't for, for, for other reasons. For certain reasons. And they like their Aperol spritzes, their Negronis. We can give them that option now. It's, I think it's quite cool. Um, but yeah, so these, these aren't, they haven't become popular in Japan yet. No, not yet. Um, uh, we're still building up uh, no alcohol drinks upon request of what we have in hand. Mm -hmm. But certainly, if you have like some some ingredients like that, in case that you need to serve something that is no alcohol for for a group or for a person or for some people, sometimes you need to have some extra tools to. Yeah, to use in your bar because uh, it's not going to be hundred percent people coming and just having a groan in your bar. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes exactly. once in a while you need to serve something low ABV or or a non-alcoholic drink. Well, cool. I'll I'll, I'll send you I'll, I'll I'll send you the information on those, and if I can send you a care package with some either samples of them or the full bottles, then I'll I'll do so. Um, are you still importing oh. things into Japan? No, yes, we do. Mainly, we we have like four four brands of uh, absinthe. In between those four, are two of them are made in Switzerland. Oh, nice! And uh, Bob's beaters as well, scrap beaters. Yeah, it's it's interesting because um, one of the things one of the things I loved about when I first met you, um. My brain getting coming into Tokyo had this uh, mindset that every bartender in Japan would be wearing a white um, jacket, Ginza style, and doing like, you know, carved ice and everything like that. Um, and then you guys just completely shattered that mold and were completely like a different field of a different style. More, well, I guess more my style of bartending, um, which is a bit more freedom and creativity. and 
to do that for, for people that are still watching, if anyone's still watching, to do that, you were uh, importing your own bitters and absinthe and gin and things that weren't uh, were available to 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 Western markets, but not necessarily popular in Japan just yet. Um, oh, that's true. Back then, uh, we went to to use in our cocktails and bitters were not available pretty much only angus to them and then uh, in our traveling we start to purchase at the sun and then uh, would be too unfair only us having the the bitters and uh, yeah. there's so many good bars around town that would like to use as well and then we decide to to import and support the the industry and then uh, at the beginning, we used to import bitters, but not nobody would buy it because they didn't know how to use it. Yeah. But it had been already 10 years that we have been importing bitters as well. And now we, our import section is really small. We don't usually put products and start to be a main thing. It's only tiny, small. Our portfolio is really small. Yeah. But, uh, but it's personal. We always... Yes, yes, we always think about if it, the bartender is going to need, if it would be a, a product that would match the way we work, and then uh, we bring some products to import, because I know how, how tough it is to run an a import company as well, because... Uh, I, 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 feel, I feel like um, I, I genuinely just got excited to introduce you to some things that you might not have seen. Um, I wasn't trying to, I don't work for those guys. <laughs> I wasn't trying to, <laughs> to muscle you into importing them. <laughs> I was just, uh, I was just sharing, you know, I love them. So I, th I th yeah. and at first I was a bit reluctant because I'm like, what? No, no. And then, well, yeah, well, as soon as you start using it, it's really nice to have um, a classic cocktail that you know in your back pocket mm -hmm. that has no alcohol, mm -hmm. you know? Makes yes. it life a little easier than uh, having to kind of adjust on the fly. But look, I, I'm I'm very conscious that I'm taking up all your time. Thank you so much for being on the show. It's it's Dean, been amazing to catch up with you, and I'd love to catch up with you again when the lockdown is co like you know people are out of everything in a few months and see how you're doing and make sure everything's all right. Perfect, but I um, can't uh, wait to visit you guys and visit your cabin because yeah. I know that uh, your selection of probably is much better than by trench. I can see all the selection of rum that you have back then. Yeah, I've got, I've got. A, uh, you'd be shocked, but like, there's um, if you look at well, it's probably not the best example, but basically, all of the floor there's about there's about five hundred bottles of alcohol in this bar. You can't see them all. There's a big library of stuff over there, but it's getting a... I've got to stop. I keep buying things, and I've got really got to stop. Um, but but it's fun. And, and things like the pink soda, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to buy any more alcohol, but and I'll buy new mixers and new fruits. And my wife, Electra, you've met Electra, she's buying things and like, try this out, try that out. So... Uh, she's starting to get into it as well. It's it's going to be dangerous coming soon. But when you come to London, you'll have to come say hello. Okay. All right. Ciao, man. Thank you so much. Um, thank nice you night. and uh, thank you everyone that dropped by and saw the little chat to Dean. Uh, I would like to thank you everyone as well and super cheers for everyone and I hope to see everyone. If it's not here in Tokyo, somewhere in Asia, or somewhere in London, or somewhere around the globe. Cheers, guys. Stay Thank safe. You, Rogerio. Cheers. Thank you. All right. Um, and that's that. Uh, I'm going to sign out and let Rogerio go back to his uh, business and take care of his bartenders. Thank you for tuning in so early in the morning. Um, well, you know, it's super early in the morning for me, but I... I wanted to start looking at catching up with people, old friends and, and people in different um, parts of the world that probably not appropriate to, to go live with them at two o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm actually looking forward to doing this again with some of my friends in Australia. And uh, yeah, it'll be great. Take care. Thank you all so much. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.